Hello YouTube, we are back in the Cora Tree Dungeon and I'm afraid that you have been lied to by me. I told you when I installed my 12th fret marker made of persimmon wood in my Pau Rosa neck that I liked it. Well, I like the idea of it, but honestly, the more I look at it, the more it looks like, spin it around, the more it looks like a belly button or a birthmark or some sort of a scar that just doesn't belong. So for that reason, yeah, I'll be removing that and replacing it with something that I think will look pretty darn spiffy and will definitely not reminisce of a belly button. I will be drilling out the belly button of my guitar today and will be replacing the piece of persimmon wood, which, you know, best intentions. My my goal there was to use a piece of locally sourced wood that tied in with the rest of the guitar. The neck is persimmon wood and walnut wood. And um, make a fret marker that would be visible but discreet. And yeah, it's not good. It's ugly. So... I am going instead with some, can I find it, can I, oh here it is, yeah, some red onyx, or red opal chips rather, I said onyx, didn't mean onyx, red opal chips and super glue, and we're going to do this dude up like um, a piece of jewelry, see how it works. So I'm going to spin the camera around and drill out the belly button and get this working. And probably going to be painting the body cavities on the guitar on this video as well. Because that needs to be done. After that, well, there's not much left. We are back. We are live. And we are chucking in the bill drip. Yes, I know it's a drill bit. Alrighty. So as you can see, I already found the center of my hole there. Or the center of my belly button. So, you know what? I think I am going to go in first gear on this. Because I don't want to drill into my truss rod. Oop. That's my battery done. Okay, I'll be back. Stick a neck call under here. Just because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, a little more stability there. And here we go. Persimmon is hard, hard wood. not trying to go all the way through the fretboard but I want the opal to have a little bit of depth okay I think that is going to be deep enough of the wood chips are out of there because well, I don't want any of those floating to the top and be more proud than my onyx. On opal, gosh, why do I keep saying onyx? Onyx was my nephew's dog. Hey Rob. 
That's not the same nephew, by the way, as the one who is doing my videos. That would be William. William Welch of Welch Films. Check him out on the YouTube. Great, clean entertainment. Some family fun kind of stuff. And William is doing some pretty crazy video production. He's he's a young guy, but he is making a name for himself. <laughs> making a career for himself. The guy is super motivated and super talented. Okie dokie. So this is my first go with... Easy Inlay. You see that? It's Easy Inlay Opal Dragon's Eye. Gem Inlay Material. So, they said it's easy. I imagine I will find out just how true that is. If I can figure out how to open the container. Ah, like that. Okay. So, the way that you're supposed to use this stuff is you're supposed to ah, not stick your fingers together with super glue unless it's absolutely necessary, which turns out it never, ever is. Well, probably there's no such thing as never. It's rarely necessary to stick your fingers together with super glue. Even if you sever a finger and you're trying to replace it or reattach it, I'm sure that super glue is not the hot ticket. So I am supposed to put CA glue. We're not going to call it super glue because well, super glue is a brand and this is not that brand. This is stick fast, medium viscosity CA glue. Yeah, I'm supposed to put some of that in the hole and then we, ooh, can you see that? Really pretty. We shake in just enough of that to fill the hole. And try to make it all go in. And it did. Yeah. Maybe a couple more flakes. So there we have the opal part of the inlay. And now that that's done, we hit it with some activator just to lock everything in and I'm going to spray this from a distance because I don't want to blow out the particles I'm going to switch over to a thin CA and the reason I'm doing a thin is because we don't want any air bubbles at all in this and the thin will be more able to get into the teeny tiny little cracks and crevices and openings and spaces inside the hole without leaving signs as in bubbles. Okay, so that's looking pretty stinking hot. Watching the level of the glue in that hole drop as it's being absorbed. And I didn't want to go out onto my fretboard, but I did. And I did it again. So that's just going to have to be sanded off. But I think it'll be all right. So that's looking pretty good, actually. 
the CA is hardened ish but uh, we gotta make sure that it's completely set before I start cutting it so while we wait for that we will go to shielding paint I have about six coats of my finish on the guitar body and it is a hard wax oil Osmo hard wax oil in case you missed an earlier episode and um, that will that'll serve as a protectant not only against humidity and weather and damage in the future when the guitar is in action but also a protectant against me and what I'm about to do because you know if you have watched me for a very long you know that I tend to screw things up and it's not like my superpower or anything but if I had one that would probably be it um, anyway it is wax and it is oil and it is not absorbent so if by chance I should spill any of my paint onto there well it should be an easy wipe up that said I also know my record so I am going to throw some masking tape around there pretty quickly. I'm not trying to be fancy with it. Don't need to be terribly precise. But I also don't want to spend the rest of the evening cleaning up magnetic paint. This is a quick masking job. It is an imprecise masking job. It is probably an unnecessary masking job. But it is a masking job. So, the parts that are covered with tape will not get glued or will not get painted. So, when you are shielding your guitar, you can do that with copper tape or probably aluminum tape or steel tape or brass tape. Gold tape. Gold tape would be really hot if you want to do that. Um, if you can afford it, because then you could tell everybody, hey, I got gold tape on my guitar. Yeehaw. So, um, I found a great deal today at Lowe's where they had Rust-Oleum Magnetic Primer on sale, actually on clearance, so they won't be carrying it anymore. Stuff is normally about 20, 22 bucks a quart, and I got it today for 511. Apparently they were really, really eager to get rid of it. So, um, yeah, I just bought one quart because, uh, oh, it's not even a quart, it's 30 ounces. By the way, it's got steel in it. I wish you could pick this up. This weighs probably as much as a half gallon of regular paint. It's unbelievably heavy for its size. Yeah, it contains something magnetic and it is available for now at Lowe's. Probably one in your town has it too. So give them a call. So the big deal with this stuff because it is full of metal particulates, the big deal is going to be to stir it very, 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 very well. Also, there is no such thing as scrap wood. Uh, this is a piece of Bolivian coffee wood that used to be a piece of flooring, and it, well, it gave up the rest of its tree to become um, part of a guitar neck. So it is a stirring stick now. Okay, this stuff is crazy. It's, there's about a quarter inch of liquid on top and a, 
bunch of stuff that looks just like black mud underneath it. So yeah, I've been stirring this for about 10 minutes and it has reached a mm, about a milkshake type consistency that is uniform so I'm assuming that that is the way it's supposed to be I've got it all scraped off of the bottom and sides I can feel and hear that so I am going to use the cheapest crappiest paintbrush that I can find to do this job because I don't believe I'm going to try to reuse it. This stuff is just too nasty. But, simple job. Just get the paint in the cavity and spread it around right along the edges. And if you swipe upward from the bottom, then when you get to that break to the guitar top, you're not going to fling paint onto the finish. Here we have it. I did paint the insides of the recesses that my control knobs will fit in. Um, don't know that that will necessarily block out a lot of radio signal, but it might. And if it does, then that's cool. If it doesn't, well, it didn't hurt anything, right? Except probably added two pounds to the weight of the guitar. Did I mention this paint is really heavy? So what music are you listening to? I need something good to hear. I've been on another porcupine tree binge lately and love their stuff, man. Stephen Wilson is an awesome writer. The whole band is just phenomenal. I love his work with um, Blackfield and his solo work too. Yeah, if you got something else in mind that, or if you got something else that you've been listening to that is similar. Drop a comment, man. Let me know. Hey, I actually made less of a mess by not taping up this side. Kind of weird. And absolutely in character. Yay. See, we do have a cover plate that matches and fits. And we'll go right in there. Let's cover the cover plate. I'm just gonna paint the snot out of this thing. I'm lying, it doesn't really have any snot in it, but I am gonna paint it with this magnetic paint. And just like that, we have a painted cover plate and a partially painted wrong side of the cover plate. Told you, if it can be made a mess of, you can count on me. Oh, we still have an inlay to work on. Our inlay is inlaid. So my job at this point is to make that look like an inlay. And that's going to mean, so because this is the file that I have, this is the file I will use. It's honestly bigger than I would prefer. Yep. That's what I should have been using all along. Wow. So there is a preview of what this is going to look like. i got to tell you, I'm not disappointed. Alrighty, so you can't quite see it, I don't think. But that is down to 
just about the thickness of a fret marker sticker if I were to use stickers for this. I'm not busting on anybody who uses stickers for their fret markers. So, there we have it. There you go. I think that looks a little bit nicer than a belly button, don't you? Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope that you will click like and subscribe. After the great guitar build-off is over, I intend to keep the channel going. And if you like, you can follow me through well, a bunch more builds. I got one in the works that will be a pretty special bass guitar. All right. Anyways, yeah, I was saying click like and subscribe, please. And watch my channel for lots more from the Core Tree Dungeon, the Core Tree Shed. Probably even going to come to you once in a while from the Cora Tree Mobile Studio. Um, that's a big blue truck. But, yeah, sometimes. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. <laughs>